The Miracle of Ofida, Italy, 1280 AD. The Eucharistic Miracle of Ofida actually took place in the city of Lanciano, the site of the first miracle we talked about in this series. This second miracle, which is now kept in Ofida, some 16 miles north of Lanciano, did not happen to a doubting priest like the former miracle. Rather, it was occasioned by the discord in an an unhappy household. A woman named Ricciariella, the wife of Giacomo Stasio, deeply afflicted by her unhappy marriage, had tried everything at her disposal to win the love of her husband. Finally, someone claimed to know of a way for her to achieve the harmony she desired. Ricciarella was advised to receive the Holy Eucharist, convey it to her kitchen, and heat it over the fire until a powder was obtained. This she was to put into the food or drink of her husband, who would then grow to love and respect her. In desperation for relief from her sad situation, Ricciarella attended Holy Mass, received the Eucharist, and secretly let the host fall from her mouth into the top of her dress. After taking it home, she placed it on a copo, a semi-circular tile shaped like that which is placed along the ridge or summit of a roof. She then placed the tile over a fire. As soon as the sacred host was heated, instead of turning into powder, it began to turn into a piece of bloody flesh. Horrified at what was taking place, Ricciarella attempted to stop the process by throwing ashes and melted wax into the tile, but without success. The tile soon bore a huge smear of blood, and the flesh remained perfectly sound. Frantic for a way to dispose of the evidence of her sacrilege, Ricciarella took a linen tablecloth decorated with silk embroidery and lace and wrapped it around the tile and the bloody host. Carrying the bundle outside, she went to the stable and buried it in the place where garbage from the house and filth from the stalls were heaped. That evening, when her husband, Giacomo, approached the stable with his horse, the animal refused to enter. Contrary to its usual docile behavior, and remained stubborn. Despite a severe beating from its master, at last it relented, but instead of proceeding directly, it entered sideways, facing the heap of garbage, until at last it fell on its knees. Giacomo became violent at the sight and accused his wife of placing a spell on the stable that made the animal fearful of entering it. Ricciarella, of course, denied everything and remained silent about the cause of the difficulty. For seven years, the Blessed Sacrament remained hidden beneath the garbage, and for that period of time, the animals went in or out sideways appearing to show respect for the heap of refuse. Instead of peace, Ricciarella had attempted to gain from her sacrilege. She was instead tormented day and night with remorse for her sin. Finally, she decided to confess what she had done to a priest from the monastery of St. Agostino 
in Lanciano. Prior Giacomo Diotalevi, a native of Ofida. Kneeling for confession, Reciarella found herself unable to speak through her sobs. Even though the priest encouraged her to be unafraid and to be at peace. Finally, still being unable to speak of the sacrilege, she asked for the help of the priest who began to name various sins. At the end of this list, seeing that Recherella did not admit to any of them, Father Giacomo said, I have told you all the sins that you can be committed. I do not know what your fault could be unless you killed God. This is my sin, she said. I have killed God. Richarella then related the story of her sacrilege. Surprised at what was finally disclosed to him, Father Giacomo absolved Richarella, encouraged her to be at peace, and arranged to have the host removed from the garbage pile without delay. After vesting suitably, he journeyed to the stable and unconcerned about disease or sickness, began to remove the garbage and filth. To his surprise, he discovered that the tile, the bloody host, and the tablecloth were not contaminated and looked as if they had been recently buried. Father Giacomo then carried the tile, the host, and the tablecloth to his monastery. A few days later, after obtaining permission from his superior, he went to his native Ofida and showed the miracle to Father Michele Malicano and many illustrious citizens of the city. All agreed that the miraculous host should receive maximum honor and that a special reliquary should be crafted for its enshrinement. For this reliquary, a large amount of silver was donated. It was then decided that artisans in Venice would be entrusted with the responsibility of fashioning a reliquary in the shape of an artistic cross to contain not only the miraculous host but also a piece of wood from the cross of Christ. Father Michele, along with another priest, carried the host in a chalice to Venice. There he commissioned a jeweler to fashion the special reliquary and swore the jeweler to secrecy regarding its purpose. After the jeweler accepted the chalice containing the host, he developed a severe fever. He was in a state of mortal sin. But after he made a proper confession, the fever left him. When the construction of the cross was completed, the jeweler sealed the piece of the true cross and the miraculous host under separate crystals and entrusted the reliquary to the two priests who soon left Venice for Ofida. The jeweler, however, did not keep his oath of secrecy but told everything to the doge the chief man magistrate of Venice, suggesting that the cross and its treasures should be taken away from the, priest, from the priests and kept in Venice. The doge agreed and sent a ship to intercept the priests. But a storm at sea made navigation impossible and the effort was abandoned. When the, the priests arrived at Ancona, Venetian merchants told them of the doge's intention of their apparently miraculous escape. Under the continued protection of God, the priests arrived safely at Ofida with the precious cross. At the time these events occurred, they were documented on parchment, which unfortunately can no longer be found. However, an authentic copy made by the notary Giovanni Battista Doria and dated April 18, 1788, is still preserved. High atop the main altar of the sanctuary of St. Augustine in Ofida, 
also known as the Sanctuary of the Miraculous Eucharist, is found an artistic arrangement which houses the silver cross containing the miraculous host. The tile on which Rechiarella painted the host, still showing the smear and splotches of blood, is kept in a rectangular glass-sided case. The tablecloth in which the tile and the bloody host were wrapped is also kept under glass. Paintings depicting the events of the miracle can also be seen in the church. In 1980, solemn services were observed in honor of the seventh centennial of the translation of the miraculous host from Lanciano to Ofida.